So as you can see, there was an accident. It was my fault. The scope got dropped. Now, what makes this even worse is this wasn't my telescope. Well, you know, now it is. I'm, I'm paying him for all of this. This was the telescope of a club member who loaned it to me because I wanted to do something with it. What is it? Well, it's a Mead 10-inch F4 Schmidt Newtonian from the early 2000s. What is a Schmidt Newtonian? Well, Dad, this is my third Schmidt Newtonian I've reviewed here. It's become sort of a minor specialty of, of mine, I guess. But a Schmidt Newtonian superficially resembles a regular Newtonian, except that the mirror is usually spherical. Spheres are much easier to make than parabolas, and so your quality control should get a little bit tighter. Spherical mirrors do yield a lot of distortion, and so what they do is they put a Schmidt corrector plate on the front, which corrects for the aberrations. Now, properly executed, a Schmidt Newtonian should yield between 40 and 50% less distortion than a similar, regular, conventional Newtonian. That's in theory, of course. In practice, things get a little bit strange. Schmidt Newtonians were never produced in large numbers, and because of that, the quality control and the mass production numbers and so forth never really clicked into place. These are sort of a niche telescope. Mead made a couple of runs at these back in the 1990s and 2000s. I don't know if they're going to try that again. Schmidt Newtonians got a bad rap because some of them appeared in low cost units, and I don't know why anybody would do that because it's a complicated design. The Schmidt corrector plate is doing all of the heavy lifting optically, and it's not an easy thing to make. So I, I put the lens cap back on because I, I just can't bear to look at this. <laughs> so this came from the era of Mead that was not their finest moment. Mid 1990s to mid 2000s, those were not good years for Mead. They were one of the first people to really wholly embrace this idea of going offshore manufacturing to these Asian countries. Today we expect this sort of thing, but back then they didn't have it perfected. They started outsourcing this stuff, and there were some questionable products that they sold during this time. These included the LXD300 and LXD500 mounted telescopes, the ED series refractors on LXD650 and LXD750 mounts, and they were starting to push the DS series pretty heavily at that time also. But no product in that era sparks the ire and hatred of amateur astronomers quite like the LXD55 and LXD75 mounts, which have a well-deserved reputation for being some of the worst equatorial mounts ever made. Now, because of that, these Schmidt Newtonians got a bit of a bad rap. Some of them left the factory in questionable condition, some of them were not well collimated, and collimating a Schmidt Newtonian is not a trivial task. You can collimate it like a conventional Newtonian, but there's a little bit of tweaking that has to be done. Should you wind up with one of these, I will put some instructions below, a link to somebody who will tell you how to collimate a Schmidt Newtonian. I usually don't try to touch that, and in fact, the owner of this one wound up paying a dealer to do it for him. Now, the owner of this, tells, of this one tells me that when he bought it, he bought it new from a dealer, the LXD75 mount lasted, by his estimation, a grand total of less than five seconds, and it never worked again after that. As a result, when you see these things out in the field, they usually resemble this. That is, number one, they are an optical tube only because the mounts have long since departed us, and number two, they have been modified. Some of the hardware that came with this thing, stock out of the factory, was questionable. The owner of this one took off their corrector plate and flocked the inside. There is supposed to be a rubber type spacer between the secondary and the corrector plate so that you can have something to cinch up against. You really don't want to loosen the secondary too much when you're collimating it because the secondary can spin around. Now you've got to deal with that. So when you went in and looked at that, there wasn't a piece of rubber. It was just a piece of parchment paper. So you put a rubber gasket in there and things are cinched up quite nicely. Also, the major thing is he changed the focuser. The focusers from this blue steel era of Mead were really bad. And in fact, this is a moonlight focuser. It's quite beautiful. And they actually had a line of these made specifically for Mead Schmidt Newtonians because so many people were replacing the focusers on their stock units. 
Okay, so the original idea here, and I would still like to do this at some point, is to try to gauge just how good these Schmidt Newtonians are by today's standards. Some of you may recall I did this review of this Orion 10 inch F4 conventional Newtonian a few months back. And we got into a debate, the guys and I did. What's better, a Schmidt Newtonian or a conventional Newtonian with one of these. This is a paracor, and it's made by Teleview, and it slips in here like this, and it corrects for aberrations at the edges and cleans up the image. According to Teleview's literature, this turns an F4 telescope into the distortion that you would normally see in an F8 Newtonian. That's pretty neat. Now, there have been a couple of different versions of the paracor. This is the type 1 tunable type. There is a type 2 that they have right now, and it's really a, a remarkable device. It will work in any Newtonian, but it's best in fast reflectors. And, uh, uh, yeah, don't, don't look up how much that thing costs. Okay, so what happened? I'll describe what happened to me in case you find yourself in this situation, which I don't think you will, because I... Thinking about this now, I was probably in a fairly unique set of circumstances. So this telescope is on, and I don't know if you can see it, a pair of Vixen-compatible dovetail plates. The optical tube weighs 38 pounds. My CGE mount only has a D-plate saddle on it. So because it has a D-plate and this has a Vixen plate, we need an adapter to go between the two of them. And the product that I use is this thing from Lozmandy. I think they call it a VSP. And there's nothing wrong with this product. I've used it several times before, but the largest telescopes and the heaviest loads I've put on here in the past were my FS-102 and a C8. Both of those top out at around 12 or 13 pounds. This is 38 pounds. It presents a much bigger load. Now, when you see the way this fits inside the CGE saddle plate, there actually isn't a dovetail here. You can see it's just a square sort of thing, and the saddle plate clamps onto the side. The actual amount of the point of contact between the CGE and this is actually quite small. It's only a millimeter or two. It bites into the sides of this device. Now, again, for a 12 or 13 pound load, it's not an issue. It's very secure. I'd never had anything this heavy on here before, and I'm looking back, I think it's probably the interaction between the weight of the telescope and the way this is designed and the way the CGE's saddle plate is designed, the three of them working together wound up creating an unfortunate situation. Making it even worse, I was looking at the Orion Nebula at the time, and it was telescope was positioned in such a way that everything was horizontal. Telescope on one side, declination shaft horizontal on the other, meaning that the lever arm, the amount of torque that was placed on this thing was at its maximum and the adapter plate let go. It took out a bunch of stuff that was underneath it. I had a laptop, that's been smashed. I had a finder on this, that fell to the ground and smashed. And I also had my camera and my auto guider on there. I'm testing those right now. I think the auto guider is okay, but the camera is exhibiting some strange behavior and there may in fact be some additional fallout from the accident. Okay, so what's next? Well, sourcing a new Schmidt corrector plate at this point is going to be impossible. I'm not even going to try. I did float an idea to the guys of just finding a secondary spider, taking off the corrector plate, and then just using this thing as a straight Newtonian. At least it's getting used. Now, a spherical mirror at f4, one of the guys looked this up, will yield a wavefront error of somewhere around five and three quarter waves. <laughs> wow! <laughs> So when we discovered that, all of the guys started mentally walking away from this project. All of them, of course, except me. I want to see that. How bad is a telescope with five and three quarter waves of error? I mean, would it throw up an image at all? Would it focus? I mean, what are the edges going to look like? I kind of want to see that. <laughs> so I might be able to talk the guys into coming back and helping me do that project. Maybe I can use it at star parties. But as it stands right now, I put the check in the mail. I just bought this telescope off the club member. It kind of feels like I just bought a very expensive moonlight focuser, doesn't it? Okay, so there you have it. Details of my accident. Thanks for watching. Everybody be safe out there, and I'll see you soon.